Okay, so yeah, this will be a talk about building feature stores on Snowflake. Um, so we are, many of you know, Snowflake has been around for, for coming up on a decade now. And, you know, we started off as just this, this other, you know, an alternative data warehouse, right, in the, in the field of, of many different options. Um, what what separates, separates us from the competition today is we are now the data cloud. And so because we're the only third uh, true uh, multi-tenant um, SaaS company, um, this allows us to really go from being a data warehouse to a data cloud, meaning you can now integrate with your first party, you know, your, your normal organization data. But uh, in addition to start working with second party, your partners, suppliers, vendors, and then even third party through a, a, a data marketplace. And I'll get to a second on why this is relevant. And if, if you just think about it, if you have like a data cloud plus a feature store, you know, could we have like an actual feature cloud where, you know, different companies and whatnot are just sharing their features as well. And so uh, that, that, that's pretty awesome. When it comes to being a data cloud, uh, you're, you're really not going to go far if, you know, you don't have the, uh, the compute power to, to back up your name. And so Snowflake as well is this highly scalable compute um, place where you, you can program in your language of choice. SQL, of course, is kind of the standard today for your traditional warehouse. But through our Snowpark program, you can now start programming in Java and Scala uh, and, and soon to be Python as well. So it doesn't matter if you're a SQL guy, a, a data scientist, an analyst. We're working on supporting a programming language for you. And of course, giving you kind of that fastest processing engine with no operational overhead uh, while, while we're at it. And so how does this fit into kind of feature stores? How does Snowflake fit? Where we see ourselves today is really uh, checking off a lot of the boxes of what an offline feature store should provide for you. And in addition to that, I think bringing our, our unique data sharing capabilities um, as long as well as our unique um, ability to store kind of three types of data as well is going to expand, you know, what the, the true uh, requirements for an offline store are. And so of course today we kind of see this in three different angles, one by feature type. Of course, we can do batch features pretty well along with batch aggregate features. Through our new UDF capability, you can now start computing real time features as well. So if, for example, I'm going to apply for a credit card, uh, along with that form comes my IP address, I can quickly compute um, because I have access to all these additional tables within my uh, Snowflake account. I can say, hey, look, based on this IP address, I can now compute geolocation. Oh, wait a minute, this person is in a different place where they say they are. You know, maybe we have some fraud there. That would be a real time feature. On the second dimension, um, as I alluded to, we have uh, support for all three types of, of data. So whether you have your normal structured numeric categoricals, um, those will all fit in fine like any da uh, data warehouse would for you. But when it comes to semi-structured and unstructured data, we can now allow you to start registering features on things like images, video files, um, JSON blobs, Parquet, really enabling you to do a lot more with some of these more advanced neural network type modeling approaches that are you know, you know, out there and available to solve a variety of different problems. And then of course, the last thing, and I think this is the most differentiating for Snowflake is our data collaboration. So how can you start building features on not just your first party data, but talking with your supply chain, talking with your partners, vendors, et cetera, to share data amongst private data exchanges to better make the entire system uh, go, what, whatever that means to your organization. And of course, this third party data marketplace where I can now start pulling in weather data, um, IP to geolocation data, aggregate retail uh, sentiments about shopping trends, media, et cetera. And that is all a first party object to Snowflake. And of course, will be a first party object to your Snowflake store as well. Um, and so with that, um, 
happy to announce that we are now available on Feast as a offline store as well. Um, I guess I'll pat myself on the back. I was the main code contributor, but hoping that you guys are able to uh, get a flavor of everything I just mentioned in terms of kind of what makes Snowflake uh, level up the game for being an offline store. And so with that, uh, thank you. And I'll take any questions. All right, sweet. And cool. That was, uh, that was perfect. And while we're waiting for some questions to come through, I like that you, you pat yourself on the back for that one. Um, <laughs> that was good. Now, what were some things that you ran into? Like, what was the challenge as you were trying to put that together? Yeah, I, I would say the main challenge is I'm, I'm not really a software engineer was kind of the hard part. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've heard from just our, our customer base that, hey, we want to get started with Snowflake and feature stores. You know, what do you have for us? And at the time it was, well, we don't really have anything for you at all. And so I kind of just picked up Beast, uh, you know, on, on the weekends and, and the nights and, uh, you know, shout out to... Uh, some of the Tecton folks to kind of hold my hand along the way. Um, but yeah, super excited and, um, you know, just trying to up the game for what a, what a feature source should be from the infrastructure perspective. That's awesome. And last one before I start talking about some of these results that we have from the poll, how does Snowflake plan to support unstructured data? Would I be able to throw images, audio into Snowflake at some point? Yeah, you can do that today, actually. Um, the way that works is we're just built on top of, you know, good old uh, blob storage and uh, compute boxes. So you can throw that all in there. We'll create basically a metadata table for you. And then you can start pulling in your unstructured data into our compute to do things like um, named entity recognition, um, object detection, um, all through our UDF capability. Awesome, man. Sweet. Well, we're going to keep cruising. <laughs>